That sounds like Jake and Joel's intro music. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We had a new huge info drop on the official Twitch channel for MTG today. We've got a lot of information about secret layers in 2021 to go through today. But before we can do that, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we can get into this info. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. And truer words have never been spoken, and they are this. They just print monies with the secret layers. And I could not agree more. We're going to talk about more secret layers. We are currently in the window of secret layers. A huge secret, secret layer. <laughs> that is going on right now with like some pretty epic drops. And we already have a new teaser coming out. So, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, man, it's a lot. Here we go. So on Weekly MTG today, big shout out, by the way, to Hipsters of the Coast for compiling all this info. They always do a fantastic job of compiling all the info. So we're just going to run straight down their list on Twitter. Make sure you go give at Hipsters MTG a follow if you want to stay up to the date on uh, up to the second, really, on MTG News. Um, Weekly MTG today, Mark Hagen, the uh, architect, Wizards MTG architect, product architect. He comes up with all the products. He's in charge. Almost every secret layer in 2021 is going to be a super drop, Jake. They are done. They are doing away mostly with single one-off super drop, I mean, secret layers. And we are going to see super drops of secret layers three times next year, starting in February. Do you think that this is the right way to do this? Well, and if we know anything about WotC, it's going to be, it's this until it's this. We're doing away oh, yeah. with this until we bring it back. We're, right. we're bringing this back until it's gone forever until we ultimately bring it back. Right. Um, I think if it works for them, they're going to chase whatever profits work for them. They're going to, they're going to chase the thing that is working for them. And uh, we're going to get into one big spicy meatball right in the, in the middle of this video uh oh yeah just yeah kind of, yeah, you know, we, yeah 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 definitely lot. tease the controversy that we've got to discuss at the yeah. end i do yeah. think that doing these as super drops does build more hype around them i know that it's very it's always exciting when there's a giant super drop whether or not any individual one of that drop is for me or not i'm always able to find at least one probably two or three in that super drop that i really want and so doing it as this big thing builds hype around it it's an event it probably makes wizards more money to do it like this because they can sell the foil bundle the non-foil bundle the bundle bundle the robot like, bundle that's right. delivered to you in a mech the bundle yeah, bundle sure. bundle that comes up through your floor and it's all of a sudden magic cards materialized in your living room yeah and that's that's the future and what i do think about that <laughs> is just um what we can expect from this is we can expect a bundle that has a foil premium in one bundle we're going to have another bundle that is going to have a non-foil premium so that you're incentivized to buy both in uh the biggest bundle that's going to have the biggest price cut and the price cut will be there for you to see with a price slashed so that you can yep. see how much money you're saving um yep it preys on much, fomo i'm seeing this in chat it preys on fomo Exactly. It does help with the uh, international customers. I do. I did see in the stream today when they were talking about how they need to expand their reach with these products because international customers get really screwed on the cost of them with shipping and such, or they just don't get shipped to those different countries at all. So that was a pretty big part relevant information. The next, there's like part of me that really wishes that big like triple uh, A. Uh, console development companies like Sony and Microsoft would adopt this <laughs> this platform, like this way of doing oh, business. God. I would yeah. not hate just like, hey, we're opening up Xbox. Manufacture to order Xboxes. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, honestly, it, it's not a bad, it's not a bad way of doing business. However, for Magic cards, it really does come down to uh, making you feel like if you don't get that drop in that moment, you're going to miss out on it. Right. Um, the 100%. big thing that I'm worried about is how many super drops are we going to expect each year? Is it going to be every month? So, 
2021, they said there's going to be three for sure. There's going to be February, and then we'll have two later on in the year. Probably a summer super drop, and then probably another December super drop. See, I think that that's better. I think if you do like three to four super drops a year versus secret layer every month, secret layer for any reason, I think that's going to be easier for people to, at least from a business perspective, perspective plan their budgeting around it's like oh we have a new big secret layer coming out that's going to be pushed and it's going to have all of these cards and obviously we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg as far as the biggest and best cards that could be printed in a secret layer product so 100 percent yeah the next piece of information they said is that the artist series with seb mckinnon was a huge success and i think that's a big duh out of everybody i know i got hyped you got hyped everybody got hyped over a seb mckinnon secret layer um and so they said they confirmed 100 percent that they will be continuing the artist series in the same way where the artist pretty much gets free reign the architect said that we can either have the artist come in and say these are the pieces that i want to create what cards fit them or the artist can say these are the cards that i want to design for and here's the theme we all saw in seb mckinnon's case how it was a story that he created and collaborated with his brother on to create this kind of world around the cards of that secret layer super drop some of the artists that they have confirmed they will be working with kaja and phil foglio which we have seen on cards like Recycle, Apathy, Goblin King here, Goblin Lord, I can't remember what it was called, Maiden. I mean, you can see some of the huge art that is absolutely, you know, staples of... of. Uh, I wonder if they have a comprehensive list of cards that they say, you know, these are on deck to go into Secret Layer, and as the artist series, you could pick one that's like a tier which would be like the equivalent of seb mckinnon picking like a damnation and then there's right. like a b tier and c tier all the way down and you can pick one of each maybe that's like a way of like making sure that the trickle of distribution of like highly sought after cards doesn't all pop up in the same secret layer because i could see an artist being like well it makes the most sense for me to pick the cards that are the most hot button cards whereas it's care. like well no maybe you just pick one card that's like the showcase card of the set and after right. that you know i don't know just but something you can to think see, about I mean, but the yeah artists, really cool body of work i love all yeah. this stuff you know they've been around wildly recognizable forever yeah yeah exactly right. we should they showed off a sketch of a piece that the foglios will be creating um chat you can tell us what you think this is to me i think goblin bomb- bombardment jake you had a different idea right yeah, possibly Goblin Grenade here. Yeah. Um, yep. But I do think Bombardment makes a lot of sense as it's multiple uh, multiple yeah. goblins holding explosives. So yeah, I could see absolutely. that being a, a good reprint as well. It's a very popular, very, very popular card. We saw that Johannes Voss is going to be getting an artist series secret layer as well. Obviously here we can see pieces from at, you know as recent as 2019. I think they've I think we've got stuff all the way up to this year. Yeah, here with Theros. Um, you know, Voss has got such a body and the of doggo. Work. Yeah. This is this is one of my oh yeah, the doggo planes. Yep, you're absolutely mm-hmm. right. I mean, yep. just looking at how Voss creates light in their pieces this is just so like this piece i remember seeing this for the first time gift of or uh, oh Ojava. yeah this yeah, yeah. piece especially in foil is just nuts i love i love voss's art and so this is an artist series that's got me super excited just because of how well they how i mean look at the wings here angels this is like they're like a go-to for angels you know yeah. anything ethereal look at this it's just like light their work with light voss is a huge i'm a huge huge fan yeah i think it will be a popular secret layer and uh i think it's the kind of thing that we're just going to continue seeing more of it uh popping up oh yeah yeah absolutely we also were told that fiona staples and this one's a bit of a departure so fiona staples um that i've i only know her body of work from a comic book series called saga thank you for that subscription um saga was a comic book graphic novel series i should say and so they're bringing in fiona staples to do an artist series as well and this i think will be the very first secret layer artist series from an artist that 
isn't necessarily an you know enfranchised mtg artist already so i think that's very cool that we're seeing them start to branch out from that you know starting with seb mckinnon just classic classic beloved mtg artist going way back with the foglios going to something more recent with voss and then going outside the mtg circle completely with fiona staples yeah actually very cool love this art style i'm really excited to see what they come up with and uh, what cards are going to be chosen. Um, It'd be cool to see Planeswalkers. I mean, what I'm seeing here are a lot of humanoid faces and figures, um, comic book style, you know? And so it'd be cool to see. I mean, look at this. Tell me that th these two maybe aren't already Planeswalkers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's no telling. Yeah. There's no telling. So that was, that was our uh, artist information that we got. The next information that we got, um, Secret Layer Ultimate Edition 2 is coming. Yay, everybody give Secret Layer Ultimate Edition 2 a round of applause. We Secret Layer Ultimate Edition 2 is going to be the 10 Pathway Lands. So what they showed us today are the six that we've already gotten in Zendikar Rising, but instead of being set on Zendikar, these six are set on Kaldheim. And then, also part of this secret layer, we're going to get the other four that we haven't seen uh, from Kaldheim, but in this Ultimate Edition 2, they're going to be designed set in Zendikar. So, conceivably, you could have all 10 cards on a single plane if you buy the singles from this Ultimate Edition 2, or you just pick up this Ultimate Edition 2 it was also confirmed, and Jake, I, I, I know you've got a lot of thoughts about this, so I'm going to let you go here in a second, but I did want to mention this because when we re reviewed Ultimate Edition, you specifically talked about the packaging. The MTG designer architect that was showing us this information today said that they loved the packaging of Secret Layer Ultimate Edition and that they are going to be bringing that back for Ultimate Edition 2. So, Jake, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Oh man, um, <laughs> it's a product that I can 100% skip. I am not interested in it. Uh, I think that these lands are cool. Um, uh, I honestly hate flipping cards over <laughs> when I play Paper Magic. And I know that some people are going to be like, well, that's a really dumb reason not to like something. But um, no, they're just far too recent for me. And um, I think they're a little too niche. As much as... It's really simple, you know, it's one side or the other. They just don't appeal to me as much as like the Triomes or like just regular fetch lands. It's just not a product for me. They're saying that it's going to cost less than the original Ultimate Edition, which means sure it'll cost less, but maybe it will still be an arm and a leg. It's hard to tell. Uh, if you're getting this, that's awesome, but I would just expect these cards to pop up all the time moving forward whenever they want to revisit this exact land. I mean, it just makes sense as uh, like with Magic Arena, it's a very attractive land. It's just yeah. super duper versatile. These modal dual face cards. I like the modal cards. I think they're great. I like the bolt lands a lot. You like they the modal cards, fair. but you don't like flipping cards over when you play Magic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> as weird as that is to say, like I appreciate the modal dual face cards, but Physically, when I'm holding cards in my hand that are paper, and maybe it will make me a worse player over time because I just don't want to do it, I yeah. just don't want to have to flip the card in and out. Or I don't want to have to play a checklist card and then go to the deck box and get right. it. And you know what? If it really does come down to the deck being superior and optimized by doing that, I will 100% do it. I'm not going to make myself a worse player by um, uh, by ignoring like a mechanic that is really good. But as long as I see like shock lands and fetch lands and all of these triomes and these other options, I just don't see it as something that I need, especially in the formats that I really like playing. Uh, so well, for like, the most Aina, part, Aina? yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. For the modal DFCs, um, for the most part, reception to this product I have seen. Oh my gosh, we're getting booze. We're getting booze about ultimate edition two, what? about secret layer ultimate oh, edition. Um, Number two, it's mostly it's people pass. have been underwhelmed. That's but nice. Jake, we need to point out what we said in our review of the Bob Ross Basic Lands in that single secret layer video that 
when there is a secret layer that is unpopular, the price of that secret layer on the secondary market increases because nobody gets yes. it. Resist the FOMO. Joel right. has a great point here. He makes a great solid point. And what you need to do is resist the FOMO. If you don't need the cards, if you don't care about them, don't buy them. But I mean, is there merit to what he's saying? Sure, maybe so. Maybe it is the kind of thing where it's entirely under ordered and it ends up being a huge slam dunk on the secondary market because nobody bought it. So the people that bought Max are now able to, I don't know, refinance their house. I don't think that's going to be the case, but you know, you never know. It's interesting. We'll see a big theme of the entire stream from Wizards today. Um, the two PR guys and the and the product architect was that they are constantly experimenting with these secret layers. Some things have worked, some things have not. And so, you know, I guess they thought that Ultimate Edition worked well enough and was received well enough to make another one. And they chose the they chose the modal DFC lands. Yeah, uh, you know, it's really easy to look at the first one and say, hey, this one had enemy fetch lands. It was well received. And, and then make another one and suffer an entirely different result because the lands are extremely, extremely different. You can't tutor these up with a fetch land. They're right. like, I don't, I don't know. So Hagen, the product architect, did confirm that they're going to be printing more of Ultimate Edition 2 and he expects it to cost less. So we shall see. Here's a sneak preview of the uh, Yo one of the Johannes Voss pieces that's going to be out next year. They also confirmed, we'll touch very briefly on this before we get into the controversy here, that Secret Layer, uh, the poll that went out earlier uh, in the year, I had a short video on this live a couple months back. Dinosaurs versus Knights was a poll that they ran on the official Twitter, and that poll directly decided what a secret layer was going to be, which I was pretty sure and it was pretty clear that they were going to do. So Dinosaurs beat Knights in that poll on the official secret layer Twitter earlier in the year, so there will be a Dinosaur secret layer drop. Not too much to say about that, Jake. Um, you want to get into the controversy, or did you want to talk about Dinosaurs versus Knights no, for a minute? No, let's just talk briefly about the controversy, which is, and you can go here and you can read it all yourself, yeah. but what it came down to is uh, Walking Dead was extremely unpopular. Everybody got out pitchforks. Everybody was ready to burn the whole thing down. We had very big popular channels that uh, introduced new formats because of it, because they felt so betrayed and so hurt. Uh, everybody hated it. They hated it. They burned everything down. And at the end of the day, it was the hands down number one best selling secret layer to date. So, um, yeah. so that's I mean, pretty if, much it in a nutshell, right? If Wizards has proven anything, it's that they are a company, right? And they can't be faulted for being a company. And so they're going to do what makes them money as long as it doesn't compromise the integral fabric of the game. They obviously have decided that Secret Lair Walking Dead did not compromise the fabric of their game. He said exactly what you said, Jake. It was the best-selling Secret Lair to date. It brought in the most new-to-magic customers yeah. to date and it brought in the most new to secret layer already existing magic players to date across the board if i was an executive sitting in a hasbro or wizards of the coast office and i said what are our metrics for success of a secret layer i would say how well does it sell how well does it bring in mtg players that have never bought a secret layer to purchasing a secret layer and how well does it bring in players to the game itself. And, and this is the fourth tier. Are you ready? How controversial is it? How much weird, how much hype, uh, how much hype, how much how hype much is there? How much publicity is there around it? Uh, yeah. Because I, I really do actually think that that's part of it as well, because I'm sure that there's somebody up there uh, at WotC that is saying, I told you so right now uh, is someone who is like, we are shooting ourselves in, in the foot here. We're cutting off our nose to spite our face. And I'm sure there's somebody up there that's going, you will see them yell and scream and cry about it. And it will be the number one selling thing. Trust me. And I'm sure that there's someone there who is just saying, I told you so. And uh, I'm not even surprised about it. It's a controversial no. product. Um, yeah. It, 
it is it represents cards that are mechanically unique that don't exist right. as as other cards and they only exist in that product they're powerful cards too there are a couple cards in that layer that are exceptionally powerful so um, am i surprised at all no uh i think that a lot of the time and this is this might be controversial to say but i think that twitter is just very uh you know toxic and just wants to yell about things and um i think a lot of the time we just have to curate what kind of info we want to take in and what kind of um i don't know experience we want to have on a day-to-day -day basis that being said i think that uh you know them being completely blunt about it says everything right. and now as a community you have to decide what do we want to do with this information? How do we want to move forward now that we know that not, a we hate it? It's going to happen again. B, we're, we are buying it anyway. Right. It's the thing is, is it's going to happen again. Um, this all but confirms it. They didn't directly say we're doing these licensed products more going forward, but they specifically hit on the three points. It was the best selling. It brought in new faces to the game and it brought in in franchise players to secret layers. That's a home run. That's a Wizards of the Coast Hasbro perspective home run, which means yep. like it or not, it's going to be happening again. And Jake, I don't know if they're going to do mechanically unique again. I don't know if they're, you know, they think maybe they can walk back the mechanically unique thing and just make, you know, for Strixhaven next year, make Harry Potter proxies and sell Harry Potter and Hermione and Ron and Voldemort as, you know, Tevish Zat as Voldemort proxy. Dope. Yeah, I would buy that. That's a that's an awesome card. But they're not going to not do this. And so like it or hate it, they're coming. There's going to be more of them. This was a home run in their eyes. And, you know, it's we saw Mark Rosewater talking earlier this week on Twitter about how the vocal minority on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook of the most passionate MTG fans, while their voices are absolutely counted and listened to, he said that, that they don't represent the majority of Magic players. He said the majority of Magic players don't know who I am, don't know who any of you are. The majority, yep. he said, the, and I don't know if I completely agree with this, but he said that the majority of Magic players don't know who the Planeswalker characters are or care. They just want to play MTG. And so it's controversial. And, you know, the thing, but the thing is, is we're going to see these, the, they're going to be happening. And so all we can hope for is that if they are mechanically unique, they're not quite as powerful. You're absolutely right, Jake. I mean, immediately after it was released, we saw Rick popping up in, in constructed formats. We see, I played against a Negan deck, our lovely mod food time played a Negan deck in an MTGO pod that I was in a couple weeks, a couple days back. Can't remember when that game was food time. Sorry, but that card, that commander slaps that commander dunks so hard. Negan is very good as a commander. And so, yeah, yeah. And so it's going to have the online codes. There's going to be that digital crossover moving forward. As long as people are continuing to buy it, the big billion dollar corporation is going to continue making it. Newsflash. Yeah, that's how right. that works. <laughs> yeah, that's news how flash, that works. They, they want to make um, money. Um, that's that's I think what we have to say about the Walking Dead cards. The one of the last two pieces of info that we got was that Party Hard Shred Harder was received really well. Obviously, um, you know I think that's one of mine and Jake's favorite out of this entire super drop. And so they went ahead and confirmed that we will have more cards in this style being dropped in secret layers in the future. And they previewed this card art for Nature's Lore, the sorcery. There's going to be another um, console poster drop as part of our February super drop that'll be coming up which is pretty cool and they also said that uh, last two little pieces here they dropped this piece of art without telling us exactly what card it was so get your guesses in now as to what you think this is some people are saying Nevenuril's disc some people are saying I think it's Necropotence Jake do you have any guesses cool. outside of that yeah no, I think it'd be cool. not really I, I think Necropotence is uh is a pretty good um is a pretty good guess yeah 
And then we also got this little screen was the last piece. And yeah, I'm seeing that you can't read it there, unfortunately. Um, maybe you can read it there. Yeah, there you can. It says you found the secret layer, secret clue. There's a drop coming next year called Read the Fine Print that includes four creatures and one enchantment. Um, we've got guesses ranging from Tarmogoyf for Read the Fine Print as a card with a lot of text. And we've also got guesses like uh, Liliana's Contract and Four Demons that kind of go along with that. So like a thematic tie-in secret layer. Yeah, there's a, a lot coming up as far as secret layer goes. You know, let us know in the comments what you think about secret layer. I know it's a lot. It's like a FOMO thing. Here at Jake and Joel, we want you to resist the FOMO. Make it work for you if it works for you, but don't feel like you need to buy every single one of these products. Remember, there's someone out there who is buying all of them, who is buying them better and buying them faster than you are. So rest assured, you don't need to try to keep up with everybody else on these products if it's not something that you're interested in. That is the new information for Secret Layer 2021. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you later. 